we're supposed to beat it. Mine, what do we do? Today, I'm gonna to be building Rose Quartz Sword from Steven Universe, and clearly, I'm gonna be putting this sword together using 3D printing, which means I needed a 3D model. I 3D modeled and split up the sword for printing right in Fusion 360. And if you want to print this sword yourself, I've got the files available for free. There's a link down in the description. Of course, if you want to model anything else completely from scratch, you're gonna need to learn a little bit about Fusion 360. And that's why I'm so glad that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. They've got tons of classes on their platform, including a bunch on 3D modeling, specifically in Fusion 360. We'll have more information on that in a little bit. I printed all these parts over on my Ultimaker using an ABS filament. And this is just some generic ABS, nothing fancy about it. On the glass bed, I like to lay down a slurry of acetone and ABS plastic that helps the prints stick down really well. As for printer settings, I went with the basic settings in Cura, printed at a 0.12 millimeter layer height with supports. Once each print was done, I can pop them off the bed and get ready for some assembly. So here are the prints up close, and I gotta tell you, they look fantastic. Saves us sanding time later. This is the guard, and I cut it in half to be able to print it in this orientation with all of the support material on the underside so that if there's any goofiness with where it contacts the part, you know, it's not on the show side of the prop. Uh, but these will have to be stuck together, so first I need to rip out all of this support material. It might get messy. Now my support settings in Cura, I know I could do a lot better with them. So I may have to do a bit of cleanup at work in here where the supports touch down, but that's okay. This is a very different project for me. Most of the time I like making props that look real and I can weather them to look all gnarly and dirty. But this one's super duper clean. Uh, I'm a recent convert to the Steven Universe hype. I just watched the entire show a couple months ago. And of course the new movie that just came out which was wonderful. Uh, I don't know why, but I just fell in love with this sword the moment I saw it and I knew I needed to make it. Like I said, it's very different than this type of stuff I usually make. I'm sure you've got a favorite prop from Steven Universe. Uh, not just the weapons either. They have so many other cool set pieces and props and costumes. And of course, all those fancy gems. So what's your favorite? Let me know in the comments what your favorite prop is from Steven Universe. What would you make? I got the supports mostly ripped off of here. You can see I didn't do a great job with my support settings, so I am gonna have to clean all that up, but at least it's on the inside. Now, this stuff here is largely useless and wasted material. However, I can get a little more life out of it by adding it to my ABS slurry. There's just acetone in here and then little bits of ABS filament that I cut up. Happen to be purple. Uh, we're gonna go with gray this time. I can take these little clumps of plastic and just mix them in there. And if it gets too thick, I can mix in a little bit more acetone. And this will dissolve this plastic into my slurry. And then it will be used for future prints to help them stick down to the bed. This way I'm not just totally wasting and throwing away all of this ABS plastic. Got all the support material removed. I'm gonna sand everything later, but First, I want to get these surfaces ready for joining. Those are the areas that were laying down on the print bed, so I need to sand them, and then I modeled some holes in there for registration. The easiest way to sand something like this is with a piece of sandpaper down on a flat surface, and if you can hold it flat against that surface, you can just sand it nice and flat. You could do this on something like a belt sander, but an aggressive mechanical tool like that has a tendency to melt your 3D printing filament. So I prefer to do this stuff by hand. This is a 100 grit sandpaper, which is nice because it leaves a nice tooth on this surface that will eventually be glued to this one. These two parts connect just like that. 
and I modeled three holes into each one of them for registration pins. Now, those holes got filled with support material and I can't claw it out of there. So, got a 1 8 inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill those out. That's so I can put in my registration pins. This is just a 1 8 inch rod that I cut down to length and I sanded the end of it so it's got a nice chamfer and it should fit nice and smoothly into these parts. You need to be careful to not drill all the way out the other side of it. This is a pretty shallow hole. And then I've got this little chamfer tool so I can go in and just put a little chamfer around there and that should make inserting the pins a lot easier. Just spin it around there and besides, it also looks really pretty. This edge here, since it was touching down on the printer, has a little lip. So I've just got a little needle file here so I can round that over. This seam will end up getting filled in eventually, so it doesn't need to be super pretty. I'm just getting rid of all the extra material. Just remember these longer pins are for the blade. I cut a couple shorter ones for this part and they just get installed like that. There we go. And then this piece should fit together. Oh, that is satisfying. Okay, um, that will get glued together, but I'm not gonna glue it together yet. I wanna keep these apart for sanding the inside here. It'll be easier to access it. I'm gonna set that aside for now and grab these blade pieces and get them ready for assembly. Just like the other pieces I printed, this surface was on the print bed, so I wanna sand it nice and flat. I'll sand the other side too, like I was saying, it gives a little bit of tooth for the glue to hold on to, which is really handy. Uh, this has the registration pin holes, but it's also got this quarter inch hole for a quarter inch threaded rod. Now when I printed this, or when I modeled it, I modeled it to size, but ABS has a tendency to shrink. So it doesn't quite fit in there, but I have a drill bit so I can enlarge that with this drill bit. I need to be careful there isn't a lot of material around this. In fact, you'll see it kind of under the surface there. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm just taking my time and removing material and I don't want it to heat up and warp at all, so slow and steady. The bit won't fit all the way through, so I'm just gonna flip it around, do the same thing from the other side. Still snug, but that fits on there nicely. Uh, the rest of these parts, like there's a hole through this guy, that got drilled out so that can fit on there. Other pieces have that hole through them too, so they all need to get drilled out. Let's see how it fits. There we go, perfect. Now I think it's time for a dry assembly. Even though I 3D modeled this and I know it should all fit together, I haven't done it yet. So let's put it all together and see how it looks. Just putting in one pin for now. Oh, that's satisfying. I love these engineer's pliers so I can grip that rod on the front. Bit of a luxury, but I think I'm worth it. Yeah. This piece right here doesn't have any pins in it. It goes over that part. Oh. <laughs> now, my first thought was that eventually I will paint this and then assemble this, but that fit is really close. And I don't think with paint on there, those two pieces will fit together. So I think I'm gonna have to assemble this and then do some masking when I paint that part, but that's fine. Uh, I could go and uh, increase the gap between these parts and then reprint the piece, but I think that would take more time than just settling on masking. <laughs> That's just, uh, and then that will go on. I already can tell this seems gonna be a little gnarly, but we can fix that up later. Let's see, this piece goes on. Uh, and it fits right into that slot. And then this will go on the end, but I do have to cut a little bit of this off. I'm just gonna use this to gauge the depth. It's about that deep. So that's how much I have to have left on there. And then I can cut that off with a hacksaw or a grinder or whatever. Oops. 
like that, and then the piece de resistance. Cap. Oh, it's perfect. There is a gem that goes on there, uh, but that's printing right now, so we'll get to that later. But for now, it's a sword. <laughs> that's it, everyone. Thanks for coming to the shop today. We're all done. That's not true. We have a ton of sanding to do. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna do is take this apart and get the blade all glued together first. Instead of using glue to put all this together, I'm going to use acetone and some of my acetone slurry. Actually, I put the uh, support material in here about an hour ago, and look, it's all dissolved. We have this wonderful goo. I'm gonna put a little bit in there for the uh, threaded rod, and then I'm gonna install the pins. I'm wearing gloves, because I'm sure I'm gonna get this all over my hand somehow. We have a fan going here, so I'm not huffing acetone vapors. In fact, it's already creating a pudding skin on the top of my slurry there. I can just mix that back in. This will go in there, and hopefully when that all evaporates, that'll be all glued together. Brush a little bit of that on the threads there, so just so that it grips onto something. And then the surfaces that are actually going to stick together, I'm just gonna brush a little bit of acetone, straight acetone right on there, and that should soften them up so that when they stick together, they adhere. So I'm gonna do that side and this side. Oh, that's a nice fit right there. And the, uh, I got a little acetone on the outside. That's okay, it'll all get sanded. Uh, and we'll clean that seam up in a little bit. Uh, it's important that we have three pins in there so that it can't twist. So with only two, it could twist a little bit. That's really snug. All right, I guess I just do that a whole bunch more times. <laughs> Oh, that is snug. And it looks really good. That's like perfectly lined up. I'm gonna let this dry now while we work on sanding all the other parts. Got my rotary tool set up with this flappy sanding disc. I think it's like an 80 grit disc. That should be perfect for coming in and cleaning up all the gnarly uh, support bits there. This does get a little melty, so I'm trying not to like dig into it too much, just trying to kind of scrape away the big bits. I got most of the offending material removed with that flappy spinny disc, and then I have some 100 grit to start sort of smoothing it out. And I'll use this to get rid of all my layer lines on all the pieces too, especially like right here. That was the very top, and as it goes around the curve, you get fewer layers, so it's a little bit more stair-steppy. So we'll use this 100 grit to knock that all the way down until it's completely gone. That's what we want. Everything's getting the 100 grit treatment. Uh, I'll go over it again with 220 and maybe 400 later, but I think uh, this is at a good place now where I can glue this together because I'm gonna wanna blend this seam inside and out. So we're gonna glue that, I think the same way we did the blade. I'm gonna have to clamp this together with tape, so I'm just wiping the surface with a little bit of alcohol. Make sure I pick up any dust so that the tape sticks to the plastic and not the dust. I'm gonna try just putting some of the slurry right on here and use that as my glue. It'll probably squeeze out a little bit and fill the gap, I'm hoping. And I don't think I need very much either. Here we go. That is pretty good. And just to make sure, I'm gonna tape it. And then I'm gonna let this dry while we sand some more parts. Made my own sanding stick by spray gluing some 100 grit to this paint mixing stick. It's working awesome. These little indents can be a super pain to sand, so I got the handle of a paintbrush here and I'm just wrapping a piece of sandpaper around it, and that can be my custom sanding tool to go in there and get rid of all those 3D printed layer lines. I print with ABS because it is easier to sand than PLA. Of course, there are lots of different filaments out there that you can play with. I just happen to really like ABS. My blade has had a couple hours to dry and it feels like it's, it's fully secured in there. So I'm gonna take care of these seams before we sand it with our 100 grit sandpaper. 
To do that, I'm gonna fill it with more ABS plastic. This is just a piece of ABS filament. I grabbed a thinner one. This is 1.75 millimeters because I don't need a ton of it to fill these little gaps. Uh, to get started though, I've got my hot knife here with this sort of flattened paddle attachment. I'm gonna enlarge the gap a tiny bit. It's kind of like when you're welding with metal, you wanna have a groove for that filler metal to go into. And then it will all fuse together. It'll all become one homogenous piece of plastic. And it's super tedious, but it works really well. You just heat up a little bit of the filament and mash it down in there. If I had a 3D printing pen, I might give that a shot, but I don't think I have one right now. Uh, and of course this is spitting out hot molten plastic fumes. So before I continue, I'm gonna put my respirator on. I went all the way around the seam, including the spine of our blade here, and then to sand everything flush, I have more 100 grit on a sanding block. These are all flat faces, which means I can just run this along there until it's perfectly smooth. So not only am I sanding this until the excess black filament is gone, but I'm also getting rid of all the layer lines. Now there's obviously a black mark there that'll get covered when we paint it, but to tell if it's sanded enough, I'm just gonna give it a feel. And I don't feel any texture there, so I'm happy with it. Now there may be some little spots that need some tweaking that I can't really see. So later we'll prime this and then all of those errors will come rising to the surface. The blade's looking good, but I need to finish the seam on this guy here. And I had an idea how I'm gonna hold it got a quarter 20 bolts here and a nut, and then I can just screw it on there. And I have a handy little handle. And then I have this pan of vise. That just gets clamped around that bolt. And now I can position this wherever I need it. This is definitely a luxury, but it is one that is worth the money, I think. Now I can just have that in space exactly where I need it and work on adding more material, just like I did on the blade. After everything got hit with 100 grit, I'm going over all of it again with some 220, and then I'm going to prime it, just some gray primer. What that'll do is it'll actually fill in some of the uh, scratches from the 100 grit. Uh, but also it will show me anywhere that's got a blemish, a little dent that we can fill in. To get everything uh, ready for painting, I've got some wooden skewers and I glued a piece of EVA foam around the end there so that it'll be nice and snug in each of these pieces so I can hold it and spray it and then set it up for drying. And I'll uh, set this up again with my threaded rod. And of course I can use the threaded rod on the bottom of the blade here to hold that. So I'm gonna go open the big door and do some priming. Doesn't this look like it's now just one piece, like it was always one piece? There are a couple of little blemishes when I look closely, um, spots on the, the seams where I didn't quite fill it in perfectly, tiny little blemishes and I'm gonna take care of that in a second. Uh, but all the other parts are looking really, really good. Might be hard to see, but there's a tiny little hole right there. And I'm just filling it with a little bit of air drying spot putty. There are just a couple of other spots on the blade here and some of the other pieces. So I'll just go over all of them. And then we can do another round of sanding. I'm trying to sand everything down to like a 400 grit, or I have a 320 grit here. Uh, and I first want to knock down the uh, spot putty now that it's dried. And most of that is going away. Uh, I also have some 200 grit here, or some 220, to be a little more aggressive and get rid of that. And most of it's getting sanded away, but what's left will fill any of the low spots that are left. And I can feel to see how close I am. There shouldn't be any texture left. Like that, and most of that green is gone, but what's left is filling in that indent. The blade needs a little love on my uh, fixes here. So I'm starting with some 220 just to knock back the bulk of that uh, spot putty. And then uh, I think I'm gonna go over this whole thing with 400 grit and uh, wet sanding just to really, really smooth it up. 
I've got some 400 grit sandpaper in my block here and a little bit of water. I ended up wet sanding just about everything down to 400. Now I've got some wax and grease remover to prepare the surface for the last round of priming, I think. So I'm just gonna wipe it down. This will wipe away any of the remaining um, dust from all that sanding and any grease from my hands will get cleaned off. That'll make sure that the primer that I put down is gonna stick really well and be super clean. Time for priming, and I'm going with a fine surface primer on here. This is meant for like models and stuff. It'll uh, be a really nice even layer of primer for our following coats of paint. It's time to talk paint. The color scheme seems fairly simple, mostly different shades of pink, but it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, I have a bunch of different paints here, all acrylic paints ready for the airbrush, and I'm mixing them or pre-mixing them uh, because I just wanna make sure that the shades kinda work well together. Instead of diluting red with white to get pink, I'm actually diluting it with this pearlized white, which is fairly translucent, but it's got that nice pearl sort of glimmer in it. So I want all of these paints to have a little bit of a shimmer. Um, really just mixing in mostly this white and then a little bit of purple. So for like the part I'm working on right here, it's a very, very pale purple and I can thin it with more of this white to get it even more pale and kind of sneak up on the shade that I want. So it's a super, super pale purple, but it's also got that nice pearl shimmer in it. I think these are gonna look really nice. I used my reference image and labeled all the different parts that needed to be different colors with different numbers that corresponded to the jars of paint I mixed up. That way when I'm painting, I can quickly glance at this and I know which jar of paint needs to be added to which part of the sword. I've got one of my colors loaded up in my airbrush here and all that's left to do is paint them all. Oh, that looks, that looks super pretty. Let's do that to the rest of them. Pretty bonkers how less than a week ago this sword was merely an idea in my head and I was able to 3D model and print it in just a few days. Developing those 3D modeling skills has given me the ability to create prop pieces in record time and there's never been a better time to learn, especially thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and categories like design, photography, crafts, and more. In fact, you can kick off your own learning adventure using our link, skl.sh slash punishedprops5. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes made by experts in their field. That way you can learn new skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. I really enjoy their classes, and I especially liked one by Vladimir Mariano. He's got a Fusion 360 for 3D printing series. He's got a bunch of classes. They cover installing Fusion 360, using the program's basic tools, creating your own models, and then of course, 3D printing your project. It's a great series of classes to get you started on your 3D modeling adventures. Skillshare is also more affordable than other learning platforms out there. An annual subscription costs you less than 10 bucks a month. And even better, they're giving you the opportunity to try it out for free. You can use the link down below to get a two month free trial. Again, that link is skl.sh slash punishedprops5. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and providing a valuable resource to creative types like me. Ooh, that looks awfully pretty. I let these dry for a day and a couple of these parts need a little bit of masking before I spray on a second coat. So I've got some nice masking tape to preserve this wonderful paint job. That needs to stay this color, so I need to mask that off. For the sword blade, I have this flexible vinyl uh, masking tape, so I can go around this part here and get a really nice smooth curve, hopefully, <laughs> question mark. And then this should be able to follow that bevel all the way down the blade. You can use a big piece of masking tape now to cover everything else. So pretty. Our paint is kind of dry. I'm going to be really careful here and take off all of my masking tape. 
It is usually good to take the tape off before the paint has had a chance to fully dry. If you put a really thick layer of paint on and it dries all the way, it's possible when you're peeling off the masking tape for it to chip along the edge. So having it be a little bit pliable still when you peel it off can help. Oh, this is the best part. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go let this dry all the way. Time for the blade. <laughs> Look how good that looks. I never make anything this clean. This is very exciting for me. <laughs> you know what it definitely is? Uh, it is still wet, so I'm gonna go let this dry. Let us now turn our attention to this gem that goes on the end of the pommel. Now, the pommel is supposed to look like a rosebud, I guess. The art's a little, I don't know, uh, tricky to figure out what it would look like in three dimensions. I thought it would be neat to put a gem on the end of it. So I did add some lines to make it a little bit like a rosebud, but there's gonna be a cool transparent gem. Uh, this is a little gem piece that I printed over on the Ultimaker in ABS, and I'm gonna sand it super smooth. It's already been sanded to 220, just like the rest of the parts before priming. Uh, but this one, I'm gonna wet sand it so that it's super duper shiny, and I don't think I need to prime it at all. Starting with 400 grit here, and I got a cup of water to get my piece wet. And what's cool is, since these surfaces are flat, I can just run them carefully across a flat surface on my sandpaper like that, uh, making sure not to tilt it. And that should get us really close to where we wanna be. Uh, and then the other edges I can tilt while making very sure it's laying flat, I can carefully sand it. And that should get it really smooth. The water is pulling all of the dust away and keeping this fine grit from getting all clogged up. There's the gem at 400, that's a 400 grit next to the raw print right there. So we've made a lot of progress. I'm gonna keep going up the grits though and get this as shiny as possible. Up next is 600 and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'll probably work my way up to like 800 or 1200 before I go to polishing compounds, but I'm just gonna keep sanding and check between each grit and see how I feel about it. It is already starting to look really good though. Yeah, that's nice. Which part did I just sand? Oh no, I have to look and see which face looks like it's 600 grit and which face is, looks like it's only 400 grit. I'll just sand them all again. I've sanded this down to 1200 grit and it's looking pretty shiny. However, I've got some polishing compound here. It's a system that goes from three to two to one, progressively finer so we get a nice shine on it. Just got a piece of paper here. I'll start with a little bit of that and more of the same. And this is three, two, one. That missed perfectly. <laughs> Now that my gem is oh so shiny, it's time to make a mold of it. So I super glued it down to this base and then I'm going to hot glue this around it. There we go. I did not use hot glue on the gem because it would create like a little lip with all the added material that would affect the casting. I mix up some Mold Max 30 to make my mold. It's a silicone and that's just gonna get poured over there. I did vacuum degas this so there's no bubbles in it. That'll make sure that if I decide to pressure cast this, it'll come out really good. If you're interested in learning more about silicone molding and resin casting, we have a whole series over on our website on molding and casting. We'll have a link down in the description. Try not to trap bubbles, so I'm letting the silicone kind of flow and do its own thing. Now I put the fast cat catalyst in here, so this should cure in about an hour, which is much faster than the regular 16. And now we play the waiting game. Silicone has fully cured, so I can hopefully pop it out of the mold. Where does that want to go? Oh, it's perfect. Please just come right off. Oh, that's nice. That is really great. I can cast something immediately. 
For casting, I have some Smoothcast 326. This cures transparent enough that our pigment or our tint will show up. And this is a tint, not a pigment. It is translucent. And I want to add just the tiniest amount. There's even a little bit of red on there. Just the tiniest amount of red to the side B and slowly creep up on my color because I want it to be kind of a pink, not like a blood, blood red. So that is just the tiniest amount. I probably want a little more than that. See if I can grab some from the uh, paper towel there, yeah. I'm gonna mix a side A in there and I have plenty of working time with this resin. I clearly have way more than I need for this tiny little mold, but it's hard to mix that small of an amount of this resin. So I'm mixing up a bunch and I have some extra molds here of just some assorted things that I can pour the extra resin into and you know, not waste all of it. Uh, so here we go. And I'm gonna do a really good job of mixing it. Uh, this resin, if it doesn't get mixed well, it can have some white streaks in it. So I'm scraping the sides of the cup. We have that whole series on mold making, but we do have a specific video where we go into tinting and pigmenting your resin. It's definitely worth checking out. I'm gonna pour this all into another container and just throw this one away. Uh, and then mix some more. I really want to make sure this is perfectly clear when it cures. Okay, we'll fill up our mold with the couple of drops. That's really all we need, and then I might as well just fill these up. And these will be pink screw heads, but who knows? Maybe I'll use them someday, and I can paint them whatever color I want. This is all going to go in the pressure pot so that it cures without any bubbles in it. Our resin has fully cured and I took it out of the pressure pot. Let's see how these test ones turned out. Oh, they look like candy. They look so good. Now, of course, I don't need these for this project, but there may be a future project where I can paint these to look like metal and they'll be really useful. It's actually what we did on the Fat Man mini nuke launcher video. Boop. Oh, that's, that's awfully pretty. <laughs> There is a little bit of extra material on the back of this, even though it's perfectly transparent. I'm gonna sand it so it'll fit in the pommel here. Uh, I will have to then buff it back to shininess, but it's the only way I can get it to fit. Starting with 100 grit. It is so grippy. Most of the material that I needed to take off has been sanded off and it fits really well in there. So now I'm gonna work my way up through the grit. So I have 220 and I'll work up until it's nice and smooth again. For the last bit of polishing on here, I'm gonna use this grinding wheel with a polishing attachment on there. Very carefully. A little bit of hand polishing and this thing is ready to install and it is awfully shiny. So it's gonna go right in like that. Ooh, very nice. Instead of using paint for the rest of my details, I'm gonna use an adhesive vinyl. This was drawn up in Inkscape and then I cut it out on my vinyl cutter. You could of course do the same thing by hand, but if you have a vinyl cutter, it sure makes it really, really easy. Uh, then I've got these adhesive back decals that I can lay down on my prop. Normally you'd put transfer tape on here, but I'm not going to. Um, this nut will get in the way and I think I can just position it by hand, carefully. My hands are clean, so I don't gum up the back of the adhesive there. And then I can just sort of lay this down and hopefully nudge it around until it's in the right position. Gently sort of get it where it needs to go. That looks pretty good. These pieces here are meant to be the thorns that wrap around the handle and the guard. I'm gonna do the handle first because it is simpler and get a little practice in before I commit to the really complicated form. This is just a sort of spiral around that. That looks okay. I think I could do it a little tighter. I'm gonna change it a little bit. Yeah, that looks nice. The other one goes kinda like that. And then the same thing, just wrap it around. Ta-da! Now I just have to do that again on this far more complicated surface. When I'm laying down vinyl like this, I usually just sort of tack it down 
in place lightly. And then once I'm sure it's all in the right spot, I'll go back over it, press it down firmly into the surface. Here's how all the vinyl looks. Now it is white, just bright white. So I wanna spray over everything using this pearlized white. It's fairly translucent, but it should give us a nice sparkle on these bare white spots. That looks pretty great, just need to let it dry. The time has finally come to put all these pieces together. I wanna to assemble them before I do my clear coat. The clear coat's gonna add a lot of thickness so the pieces won't be able to fit together. So I need to assemble it first. And I think for that I'm gonna use a five minute epoxy. Okay, I have a plan. It starts by putting a little bit of epoxy in here. I shouldn't need a ton of glue. That is nice and snug. A little glue in here and a little glue on there. Set that aside. Did kind of a practice run, so I think I'm ready. This is gonna go on there and it's really super snug. I don't need a ton of glue in there, but I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Okay, this is a pretty permanent step. Very snug. That is nice. A little bit of glue in here. And then that goes, gotta make sure that that is all lined up. It is. And then that hopefully is really snug. I'm gonna cinch this down with a wing nut and that should attach everything. Yeah, watch this will come together as I tighten it. Oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> yes. And that is snug. And I think I can just let this all cure. Just walk away, just walk away, it's fine. Don't touch anything. Time for our clear coat. I want this to be super shiny and glossy so I have something special. This is a catalyzed clear coat in a rattle can. There's this little button on the top that I pop on the bottom here which releases a catalyst in there. There it goes. Mix it up. And then I have 48 hours to use all of this before the whole thing turns into a brick so I can spray on my clear. For this guy, I'm gonna do one good sort of dust coat over all of my parts. I'm working in a well ventilated area. I've got the back door open. I'll let that sit for a good 10 minutes and then I'll spray on one more really heavy coat and then I can let that cure. It's so pretty. We let this cure fully overnight and it's super glossy and it's super, super durable. Now there's just one part left to put together. My gem is gonna go in the pommel there, but I want it to be a little reflective behind it. So I cut out a circle of aluminum tape here. It's super, super thin. But when I put that behind it, it gives the light something to reflect off of. So this can get stuck right down in there. Cotton swab to kind of guide it where it needs to go and get it down into the crevice around the edge there. While I'm getting this situated, I wanna take a moment again to thank our sponsor Skillshare for helping us out on this video. If you'd like to give Skillshare a try, and I highly recommend it, I love learning stuff on Skillshare. If you want two months free, you can use the link skl.sh slash punishprops5 and go give it a shot. My aluminum's all situated in there and I'm gonna use a very sharp knife to trim away right along this seam on the inside, very carefully. <laughs> of course, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the Extra Credit Club. If you wanna learn more on how to join, we'll have a link to the Extra Credit Club down in the description. Right now, you can join both on Patreon or right here on YouTube. Get access to some wonderful extra content. So thanks, guys, for helping us out. Hopefully, I can peel this right off. Yep, there it goes. Let's just push the edge down a little bit and we can glue our gem into place. Ooh, that's nice. That's cool, it just gives it a little bit more dimension there. To attach this, I'm going with a five minute epoxy and I shouldn't need very much. I, I don't wanna have to clean up much squeeze out. I definitely need more than that. <laughs> I can tell it didn't touch down all the way around. Okay. There we go. I filled up everything behind it. 
Doing a quick check for squeeze out. I think we're okay. I've waited more than five minutes for this to cure. Oh, it's pretty good. I have a little squeeze out there I can clean up with a knife. But this is just about ready to go down here on the pommel. Just a little more of that five minute epoxy and I can glue the very last piece on. Here we go. Oh, that is a satisfying fit. Last bit, just put a little tape to hold it on. And of course, before I let you go, I would ask that you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next time we do another cool project like this. And the last bit of our rose quartz sword is all done. It just wanted to come towards me. Ah. Ha! It's very hard to hit. Ha! Ha! I hit it on the backswing. Ha! 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 Yeah! <laughs> Nailed it, first try.